When we first started exploring and filming old railways, one of the most important features for us to find was some of the old architecture and infrastructure along the way. Perhaps some of the most striking examples of this are some of the viaducts and bridges that we come across. So we decided to put together a list of our top 10 from 2019. We'd love to hear what you think in the comments and of course where we should be going as soon as we can get out and about again exploring. We explored the Hereford, Ross and Gloucester Railway soon after some significant downpours. It's boot testing time. Boot testing time. It was a sight to see the why in such full flow. The pillars of both Backney and Ballingham Bridges still stand today as a tribute to the line that once was. And whilst we don't have rose tinted glasses about the viability of this line being opened again, we would sincerely hope that the pillars remain for all to see. Sitting on the southern end of the former Dickot Newbury and Southampton Railway just south of Winchester, this was a valley that was never intended to be crossed in the original plans. But like many lines, cash was short and the reliance on one of the railway giants was inevitable. That inevitability caused the construction of this not insignificant structure. Spanning 33 arches, it sits hidden away next to the M3. Have a look at the link provided in the description below for the full story, as it's quite an interesting one. Another bridge falls into our top 10 list of viaducts. Uh, the Ingleton branch line doesn't really hold much in the way of abandoned stations, but what a treat you're in for if it's structures that you are looking for. Right, as we're going down this line towards the final destination of Ingleton, we realise a few of these aren't the most exciting stations. Um, so we did think we'd make a point of stopping off at the um, all the viaducts along the way. The Rolfe is just one of four on this stretch of line, which was last used in the mid-1960s. Had it not been for some rival between two companies, just down the road at Ingleton, then perhaps this line would have seen a lot more traffic. In at number seven is a Clivec Viaduct. I can't express to you enough to go and visit this line. Of course, when we're able to get out and about again. If you lived in Kledich, Kledash, that's down there. Um, this could well have been your walk up to the station. Lovely walk. I did promise Rebecca, however, today will be all flat. But yeah, well, it, this isn't flat. We had no intention or even knowledge that this viaduct existed until we came here to visit both the tunnel and the old station. But as we walked up the hill to find them both, we were left in awe of what appeared out of the trees to our left. The curved viaduct sits on a gradient of 1 in 38, around 95 metres in length and 25 metres above the gorge below. In at number 6, the Charlton Road Viaduct. It sits just outside the town of Shepton Mallet and was one of a handful of completely stunning viaducts on the Somerset and Dorset Railway. Oh my god. Right, um, so you join us at Charlton Viaduct. Extremely picturesque. Um, was obviously, the line was obviously single track for quite a while. I'm not going to give you the exact dates because you'll have to refer back to our original video. But obviously, the line was single, doubled um, after a period of time. And you can see that from the video uh, clips that will overlay at some point. Up close, you can also see some of the real physics in early railway building with additional support beams sporadically placed along its convex edge. 
We have visited this line more than once, and when you consider there are more like this on this short stretch, it's not difficult to see why. So apparently some of the arches have got a projection, so I assume what that means is they actually aren't like a dead straight line viaduct, it actually comes out like that. And my perceptions, my understanding is that's probably because it's on a curve, and therefore obviously physics dictate that the energy is going to be pushing on the outside of the curve, therefore a sloped construction would obviously prevent that from actually sort of pushing or tilting it that way. That's a complete basic level physics um, yes. guess. <laughs> In number five, the Ingleton Viaduct, it tells a fascinating and all too common story in the plight of vast numbers of small railway companies trying to make a name for themselves. Ingleton was a spot where two such companies clashed. Rarely did the passengers' needs come first. So much so that each had a station at either end of the viaduct, and for a period of time companies made through passengers walk a mile between those stations. A fascinating story which will remain a significant part of the town's history forever. In at number four, the Caddishead Viaduct. We visited both Caddishead and Partington Station with Martin Zero back in the early part of the year. And whilst much of the focus was on the stations themselves, the viaduct between the two over the Manchester Shipping Canal really shouldn't be forgotten. The viaduct was built in 1892, where the line here was raised by the Cheshire Lines Committee. The newly built Manchester Shipping Canal meant the line had to be raised by 23 metres. There is a lot of forgotten architecture here, not just the Starling Viaduct. Our Every Disuse Station series number 13 saw us hit the Ingleton branch line, and in at number 3 is the third entry from that trip. The Loon Viaduct is simply stunning. Which apparently had a, I want to say, 300, 400,000 pound, 600,000 pound. I think you said 600 to me. 600,000 pound renovation, and it looks spectacular. Um, the middle section, iron, sort of still across the middle, two arches, three arches leading up to it either side, and even more um, inspiring, or whatever the word is for me, even more interesting for me, is the massive embankment that was built just before it. Um, yeah, what engineer, what cartographer in their right mind would come up with this as a route? It, this is what I love about the railways, this landscape history. Um, and who came up with the idea of that route there? A truly worthy top three place for the Viaduct. Yes, another entry from the Ingleton and its branch line down from Low Gill. Soon after our search for the Low Gill station where the line left the West Coast Main Line, we got our first glimpse of our number two entry in the top 10 viaducts for 2019. The Low Gill Viaduct is one of the reasons why the North Western Railway only made it as far north as Ingleton. They were put off by the significant cost of traversing the landscape here, and you can see why. The 11 arched viaduct carried the line over the Valley of Beck here, and still stands today enhancing the stunning landscape. In at number one is the Hamwood Viaduct. It's going to be difficult to convey in words how beautiful this viaduct is. It's not that it's visible for miles, it traverses a vast valley, it's not that it's entirely unique in its construction, but it is perhaps unique in its setting.
It took a while for us to find this, but it was well worth the walk and the search. In fact, we enjoyed the landscape around here so much, we came back a week later for another explore. If there is one place I would urge you to go and see when you can, it would be Hamwood area on the Somerset and Dorset Railway. There is so much here, including of course the stunning Hamwood Viaduct. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll be back next week with another, probably another transport history short. Perhaps one day soon we will be able to get out and about again and explore. We really are missing that. Um, stay safe everybody and we'll see you soon.